M from Queen's University, who will be talking about on Markov type surfaces over number fields and the arithmetic of Markov numbers. Um, thank you very much for um, introducing me. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm Soyeon Kim from Queen's University. Um, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going, to, I, I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm just affiliated at Queen's at the moment. Um, but um, in like about three weeks, I'm going to start um, being a postdoc at Göttingen. So um, if you want to reach me, reach out, reach out to me, um, you'd rather contact or find me in um, in 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 Göttingen rather than Queen's University. So um, just to be clear, um, that's something which I wanted to mention, and um, and this is. Um, a re recent result, um, which is from Women in Numbers Conference um, 5, um, hosted by um, the research group of Elena Fox and the Maris Schindler. And um, I would like to um, present about um, the joint work from there um, with um, Jofna Sivarman and the Maris Schindler. And then that's um, what I um, worked with them during um, the, the Women in Numbers group. So um, let me um, start by introducing Markov numbers and um, because they are surprisingly simple but very interesting objects. Um, so I just wanted to quickly mention. So um, Markov numbers are positive integers x, y, z, and they don't, yeah, by definition, uh, which appear as the solution of the following equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared um, equals 3xyz that are um, studied by Andrei Markov in 1879. So um, for instance, if you um, just want to find the simplest solution, then that's going to be the case when your xyz to be just all equals 1, then um, clearly that's going to be an integral solution of this equation m. Um, but at the same time, maybe the second simplest um, solution could be found by fixing your x and y to be 1. Um, then what you can solve for z is that um, whenever your z is equal to 2, then that can also serve as a solution of this equation. And um, the next solution could be um, obtained by um, just fixing like your x and y to be 1 and 2. Of course, there are you know, um, only finitely many choices you can make maybe um, with integers less than five of um, x, y, z, then surprisingly also um, of solution one, two, or a triple one, two, five also is um, a solution of this equation and so on. And then um, the numbers you can find such as one, two, five, and 13 are uh, what we are calling as Markov numbers. And um, this equation M is called um, the Markov equation. And um, yeah, so this is the definition of Markov numbers and the Markov equation. And um, what's so uh, interesting about the Markov equation and what is the point of finding all these um, uh, integral solutions or even studying integral solutions of this uh, is because there's a pretty systematic way of recovering all the integral solutions of this equation, um, this Markov equation. And the way behind that is by um, considering these um, three involutions, which are called Vieta involutions. And um, there's a way to guess the next integral triple which are, uh, which is the solution of that equation. So um, the first way to go is by um, preserving just the same x and y. Um, then what you're going to recover is um, the z value, which is 3xy minus z, which often just gives you um, the same point on the Markov equation. But whereas if you want to proceed and then if you want to have larger numbers, um, then the next um, involution, R2, is useful, um, which can be obtained by taking the first coordinate um, as the same one. But instead of the second coordinate Y, you're replacing that by your third coordinate. Um, then 
the last coordinate, um, which makes a solution um, to the Markov equation, can be recovered by just the using the value of um, the first and the third coordinate of the given point. And then if you use, by using that, if you um, define three x step minus y um, by also using the second coordinate, then it surprisingly um, gives you a new integral solution to the um, previous equation. And um, similarly, the third involution will use the second and the third coordinate in order to generate a new solution. And at the same time, at the end, um, if you multiply y and z, and similarly just taking out the first coordinate value, then that will also give you um, an integral solution. So given that, um, let's try to look at like the several examples that I mentioned in the first slide. So um, it's not too surprising to go um, like say from 1, 1, 2 to 1, 2, 5. So given um, the point 1, 1, 2, the way to imagine or obtain the next solution is by taking the first coordinate as the same one um, but sending your third coordinate to the second coordinate. And then if you um, think about 3xz minus y, which was in the second um, involution of the, in order to generate the coordinate, then what you're going to obtain is 3 times 1 times 2, which are x and z, um, negative 1 will give you 5. And then that is exactly um, how you can recover the third coordinate of the um, uh, solution of the Markov equation. And the next um, line, for instance, going from 1 to 5 to 1, 5, 13, uh, will be just done by taking the third involution, which takes, um, or actually also in this case, second involution. But whereas if you take the third involution, it will, instead of have, having 1 and 5, it will have 2 and 5, and then some extra numbers. Um, which you can calculate by yourself, which is going to be um, one times uh, two times five negative um, three, so that's going to be seven. So, um, and in fact, um, what you can prove is all integer solutions of Markov equation can be recovered by um, these Vieta involutions plus all um, sorts of rather trivial um, way of generating imaginable integer solutions. So if you, for instance, um, think about the group which um, has the permutation, because as you can see, um, the equation is symmetric in terms of um, the choice of x, y, and z, um, you can allow your permutations in order to generate all the integer solutions. And if you also um, have the three Vieta involutions which are introduced above, and then if you also allow sign changes of two variables, then indeed what you can prove is all the in integer solutions of the Markov equation is, um, can be obtained by um, acting this group on the triple, the starting triple, one, one, one. So this is um, one of the motivation of studying um, the integer solutions of the Markov equation and um, their generalizations because there is this very nice feature, very nice involutions, which help us to generate all the integer solutions um, available. Um, so far, are there any questions to me? If no, not, no, no okay. questions so far. Great, um, then I can move to the uh, next slide. Um, so using those involutions, you can um, generate the Markov tree, um, which is um, which actually starts from one one one, and then one one two, and then the next step is can be one to five, and then um, you can generate the tree by using the second and the third beta involution. For instance, um, the way to generate 1, 5, 13 from 1 to 5 is by taking the second involution and um, the third involution in order to generate 2, 5, and 29. And similarly, um, that's the way to go. Um, at each step, you're applying 
the second and third beta involutions, and also similarly um, for proceeding further down the tree. And um, indeed, um, this is a way to generate Markov tree, uh, which shows you all the integral triples of the, um, which are the equation, uh, which are the solutions of the Markov equation. And um, yeah, so in some sense, this um, Markov numbers and mark of three and so on are pretty simple objects to study. Um, but whereas there are um, also quite a lot of open conjectures and at the same time, very interesting deep results about them. And um, one of the starting points might be um, asked, you know, to ask what is, um, how, how it grows, what, what are the, what is there, how can we describe the growth of um, Markov numbers, uh, which is namely starting from 2, 1, and 2, and 5, 13, 9, 29, and so on. But as you can tell, um, they grow quite fast. Um, so let me introduce some results and um, maybe related conjectures and what are um, some interesting things which people have studied um, about Markov numbers. So here's the various properties of conjectures. And first, how about the growth of Markov numbers? Um, so one, uh, so this is a result by Zaghi. Um, which says that the number of Markov triples, uh, such that if your triples are ordered by um, their size, then um, their asymptotic size is given by um, the following description. So um, whenever your largest number in the triple is bounded by x, then um, such all the triples which satisfy that is approximately the constant times log x to the power of two plus some extra terms um, which are not which are dominated by the main term as x tends to infinity. And then this interestingly constant is roughly 0 0.180717. And this means that um, roughly your Markov number. So if I want to describe the nth Markov number to be mn, then this is roughly going to grow like um, e to the power of square root of n. So um, it's it's slower than ex just mere exponential growth, but at the same time, um, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a se sequence of numbers which um, grows very quickly. So this is a result by Zagie. Um, I, I actually can't remember um, the, the year when he published this result. I, as far as I know, maybe it's, it was like something like 1982, but because I don't want to make any mistakes, so I, I, will, um, I will just keep mentioning the exact, not a uh, year, but yeah, it was by using um, the tree, which I just introduced, and at the same time, um, mapping from that tree to some other tree, which is called the Euclidean tree, where you can trace down um, the growth of the numbers more easily. And then uh, he used some sort of uh, the mapping property between those two trees in order to estimate the number of micro triples um, lying in this uh, particular range. And um, of one of the famous conjecture regarding this mark of numbers is that um, is related to um, the whether like uh, mark of numbers appears uniquely or how they appear in the tree. And, um, and the statement is as follows, given a mark of number, uh, which is not one and two, there is only one triple having the number as its largest element. So what it says essentially is that um, if your mark of number is big enough, does it pop up only once? So by including these um, first two triples, we don't have that problem, but it's a, essentially it's asking um, whether, for instance, the number 194 um, pops up in other parts of the tree, for instance, in this other branch. 
So um, that's the famous unicity conjecture um, proposed by Frobenius in 1913. Um, it's unknown, so, um, so it's still open. So um, this is the unicity conjecture. And um, another conjecture related to Markov triples is that um, this Markov, whether this Markov tree triples three forms an expander family uh, modular each prime p. And this was proposed by um, uh, it was proposed by Borgen, Gambert, and Sarnak. Sarnak in um, 2007. And um, at the same time, another interesting property is happening uh, for these Markov triples, um, rather Markov triples, but um, it should be rather the generalized Markov triples because this violation doesn't happen um, for just Markov triples. But um, it's about studying the violation of the Hasse principle for um, generalized Markov triples. So what I'm saying here as um, generalized Markov triples is not um, the Markov equation that I mentioned, but it's rather um, of the form x squared y squared plus z squared equals some number a times x, y, z plus k. And an interesting um, thing to study is that whenever you fix the number k and a, um, can we prove whether um, some sort of violation of the Hasse principle happens or not? Um, so that's that's an interesting question to study as well. And um, Sarnak, uh, Gosh and Sarnak has um, some results about these um, violations of the Hasse principle for a given a and k over um, integers. And that's what um, one of the things that they studied in this in their papers. And then what we are um, what we proved um, or what I proved jointly with um, Schindler and Sivarman is that um, what happens over number fields, for instance, um, related to this mark, generalized Markov triples um, in terms of these violations of the Hasse principle. So um, not only that, um, people can also, I mean, they, they have also studied more generalized form of um, Markov equation, uh, which is of the form um, when you, like for instance, allow n variables, and then whenever you have also similar form, then um, what can we also study, study about um, all the distribution of the integers and then um, whether they can be controlled by like theta involutions and how many um, n tuples do we need in order to generate all the integer solutions uh, of such generalizations. And um, of course, the reason why um, they consider this and that generalization is because we can still recover this Vieta involution business in order to generate all the integral um, solutions on these equations. So, yeah, so um, the first generalization, uh, the second generalization, when you don't have this extra k, is studied by Horvitz. So often, whenever um, they say about these n variables, um, n variable generalization, they often mention it as Markov Horvitz um, equation. And then whenever they introduce this extra k, they often say generalized Markov Horvitz equations. But um, I will go in, I'm, I'm, if, I, if my time allows, I will mention about it at the end of the talk. But uh, for now, I'm um, not going to mention about um, in more details about those generalizations. So um, what I want to mention today is um, our results about this particular generalization over um, number field in terms of violations of the asset principles happening for a special A and case. So <clears throat> here's a pretty um, obvious observation um, which is about in order to define Hasset principle that we want that I want to talk about today. So um, there's an observation: if there is a solution with coordinates in Z, then there should be a solution in R um, because Z is in R um, is included in R, and at the same time, solutions in Z P 
for every prime p just by considering their p-adic expansion. Um, and the integral Hasset principle um, is can be stated as follows. So what about the converse of this statement? For instance, if you say that um, if there is a solution in R and at the same time a solution in Zp, Zp of a fixed equation, can you say that there is a solution um, in Z? And that's what um, integral, what the integral Hasse principle is about. So if it's asking if the existence of local solutions um, is sufficient to deduce a solution over Z, um, and if it is sufficient, then we say that the integral Hasse principle holds, and otherwise we are saying that the integral Hasse principle fails. So this is, um, this is the case when you are considering um, the case of Z. But in my case, or in our case, we considered um, not Z, but rather um, the coordinates in the integral ring of a given number field K. So whenever you have a number field K, then you can replace, uh, you can ask the same questions uh, whenever you pick up a prime and at the same time, um, their localization ring um, for each prime P and of course, primes at infinity. So you can also ask the same question. If there is a solution with coordinates in OK, then you can say that there is a solution in, um, in the localized field, for instance, R and C, given um, what your evaluation is. And at the same time, solutions in um, the localization um, or the integral domain of the localization, for instance, um, OKP for every prime ideal P. And then I'm saying if the existence of the local solutions um, is sufficient, if it is sufficient to deduce the solution over OK, then we are saying that the integral Hasse principle holds. And otherwise, um, I'm saying um, that the integral Hasse principle fails. And in our paper, um, what we were able to show, for instance, is the following. So, um, so this is a corollary. Um, in order to obtain these particular numbers, um, that's what we um, stated. This as a corollary, but um, it's just a um, it's just a special case. But we can actually generate much more cases than this. Um, so, if your if your k is a, is the subfield of degree three of the cycloatomic field Q um, zeta 31, then if you consider the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared um, minus 3xyz equals 118, then you can prove that this has no global solutions. So namely, there is no solutions um, in OK, but has local solution modulo each power of a prime ideal of K which means that um, that should have local solutions in um, all the in the integral ring of all the localized field of k so that's um, that's um, something which we were able to um, prove so for instance it rarely happens but whenever you set up your a as 3 and k as 1 1 a then um, in this case it's it's um, you can you can see that the integral Hasse principle fails for a given three and one one eight. So this means that um, the case a equals three and k equals one one eight um, integral Hasse principle fails. And in some sense, this is one of the probably the most simplest, uh, the, the, the simplest case we found for, um, for a number field extension case and for integers over integers um, based on the joint work of Gosh and Sarna, um, it seems like the simplest case which can be ex explained in um, the similar sense is um, when your three is one and then when your K is 
342. So um, that's what they um, proved as well. And um, in the rest of my talk, unless there's a question, um, I'm going to maybe ex maybe introduce the two pieces that we proved um, in order to mention this corollary and a very brief sketch of the proof of this result. Hold on, uh, so young. There is a question in the audience. Let me <laughs> run to Keith Conrad. Just wondering in this equation that you wrote down with no global solutions but local solutions everywhere, what can you can you say anything about the solutions when they exist uh, if they're in QP, even if you know a priori they're just in the cubic completion? What about solutions in QP? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, in our paper, we didn't really this investigated about the solutions in QP. Okay. Yeah, we we yeah, the, but that's a very good question. Yeah, it's uh it's an interesting question to study about um, the whether there is any solutions in QP. Well, I'm running around in the room. Any other question? No, we're good. Uh, yeah, no more questions so far. Sure. Um, yeah, and so the first piece of um, so in order to say something like this, you have to um, show uh, first that or first that there is no local solution and also at the same time, there's no global solutions separately. So um, the first lemma that we had to show is the following, which is about um, the existence of the local solutions. So <clears throat> the um, first lemma is as follows. So if you let your K to be a number field and if you let your p to be a prime ideal such that the residue the size of the residue field of that prime ideal in terms of k um, is greater than five and such that your prime ideal does not lie above two then um, this equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus alpha xyz equals gamma where your alpha and gamma is taken from the integer ring as a solution modulo p to the power of n for all um, n greater than equal to one. So, um, so this lemma is about um, is saying that um, a solution modulo p to the power of n exists for any power of n, and therefore, um, in the integral ring of the local field k p, um, you can expect that there is no um, there should be <clears throat> a solution for each power of n. So um, this is the local part of the um, previous corollary. And at the same time, what we have to prove is um, the following lemma, which says about um, the set of solutions in the entire OK. So if you let your K to be a number field of odd degree, that um, such that the ideal two splits in K. And furthermore, if you let your V, which is an integer to be um, such that all its prime are in plus minus one modulo eight, then the set of solutions in OK of the following equation, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared minus A X Y Z equals A to the power of negative two times four plus two V squared um, is actually empty. So that's um, the lemma you can prove. Um, so <clears throat> so the, lem the second lemma is, um, it's about, um, is about saying about non-existence of the solutions in OK of this more rather specifically described um, equation. So, um, so this is about the global solution. And then in order to generate the corollary um, as such, uh, what we did is um, to find the, maybe the simplest case of, um, or simplest, simplest case when this lemma one and lemma two conditions um, are met. Because then we can indeed conclude that um, in that case, our corollary um, should be 
true. So, yeah, so that's um, how uh, we did. And of course, um, yeah, so, so um, between this lemma one and lemma two, um, I hope this is clear um, that one is about the local solution and the other um, one is about global solution. Um, but what I want to say um, a little very briefly is maybe how um, the entire lemma one can be um, proved or at least sketch the proof of lemma one. So um, let me quickly recall the statement of lemma one. So um, it's about when you have a number field K and then if you have a large enough residue field, um, prime ideal with large enough residue field, and if your prime P does not lie above two, then um, your solution itself um, should have a solution um, for all the powers of the prime ideal. Um, so the first um, proof step you have to take for the proof is that um, using um, exponential character sum, or I will just describe as just using character sums equations, uh, estimations, we know that um, the equation has solutions modulo just P um, without power for um, the case when your residue field is large enough. Um, and when your P does not lie above two. And this is um, rather um, just quite intense estimation of the character sum in order to say something about um, the existence of the solutions modulo P for um, non-prime powers. And um, for the next step, what we do is um, we just use Hensel's lemma. Um, to lift all the solutions to prime powers for um, n greater than equal than one. And then <clears throat> one further step in or you have to take in order to prove um, such lemma is that you have to take care of all the prime ideals. So this step three is actually not part of the lemma one because lemma one is only the case when your residue field is greater than five. But in order to generate something like for the corollary, you need to also consider the case when the residue field K size is less than um, or less than or equal to five. And for that case, what you only have to consider is the cases when your primes are lying above two and three and five. And that's exactly when where um, all these um, little little um, little congruences that you have to um, consider in order to choose the numbers um, 3 and 118 and also at the same time like degree 3 and um, the cyclotomic field of um, of um, degree 31. So that's where all the um, specific numbers came from and at the same time in order to meet all the conditions like this. For instance, two should split, split in K and the primes are um, in like plus one modulo, plus minus one modulo eight and so on. So um, yeah, so this is a very brief sketch of the proof of um, lemma one and at the same time the corollary, um, <clears throat> which is about um, a special case when the interior Hasse um, principle fails. And another side mark which I wanted to mention is um, for the integral case, um, there's a result by, uh, let me see the, the name of the authors. Um, there's a result by, over in teachers, there's a result by uh, polyethylene Y and Sue, 
um, which where they proved um, the all the cases in Gosh and Sarna that the Brower group in their case is indeed um, empty, and therefore that can also be explained by Brower mounting obstruction. And here um, we haven't done that yet over number fields, but um, we are probably also expecting that maybe we can also prove that um, the Brower group should be empty um, as um, similar, but we haven't really worked, haven't really had the chance of work on that. Yet, but um, that's something which I wanted to bring as a side mark. And um, at the same time, combining lemma one and two, you can also generate further, like further examples of um, when your um, hostile principles, for instance, fail. So um, in the rest of my talk, I can also mention about maybe further generalizations of the um, Markov equation and then maybe some known results. Um, but I want to stop here for now and then see whether there are any questions. Let me uh, have a look. Yes, Jim. <clears throat> so you said the Brower set is empty? Oh, uh, yes, Brower so, set is empty, sorry. Uh, is there a particular reason that you think this should be true? Just uh, over a number field? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, um, I just had a very brief look at the uh, paper by Kaliu, Helen, Wang, and Su, and then it seems like many of the techniques should probably go through over number fields as well, but I really haven't really worked on that yet with my collaborators, sure. so I cannot really say anything about I, it. And also the 31st cyclotomic field was the first place that you found, a, presumably you checked like the lower cyclotomic fields and yes, nothing more else worked. Yeah. For... yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, no other questions so far. Sure. Um, then, yeah, then I, I, yeah, here are some further generalizations that I mentioned in um, previous slides of the Markov triples. So um, the first generalization is um, the following. Markov Horvitz equation, which generalizes the Markov equations to several variables um, by Horvitz. So um, there you introduce this extra n and the constant a. And what Horvitz showed is that um, indeed, um, when your a and n are the same, then um, you have the same um, you know, set of generators in order to generate all the solutions, all the integral solutions from um, the n-tuple 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then, um, of course, in that case, your Vieta involution will involve, um, will be n different involutions, um, which kind of works in the very similar way, just namely, um, you're going to have this extra um, coordinate, which has um, all other informations drawn from um, the triple that you consider in the first place. Um, so that's when the case when you have a and n to be the same. Uh, whereas if your a and n are different, it's very interesting to ask, um, so what are going to be something, what is going to be the set which you need in order to generate the entire interior solutions on top of um, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 using um, this group gamma? which includes Vieta involutions, sign changes, and natural permutations. And what he proved is that for any A and N, um, what we call as the fundamental solutions is finite. So namely, with finitely many um, <clears throat> points, set of points, um, you can indeed um, generate every other, all other integral solutions. And <clears throat> this is the case when you have an integer ring. And um, one other interesting feature of um, considering over number fields of such things is because um, in, their, in that case, um, this fundamental solution doesn't necessarily have to be finite. So that was one of the motivation of considering um, integral solutions over um, number fields. So that's something uh, which is um, worth pointing out um, as a motivation of studying over number fields. So it's not a mere um, generalizations of the same technique, but there are actually quite a lot of various properties you can investigate um, 
which um, is quite different from the interior case, which has, which is mainly um, the things people studied. Um, so another generalization can be um, the following generalized Markov Horvitz equation, uh, which was defined by Baragar in 1998, uh, which introduces not only the n variables, but at the same time, this extra constant k. And um, the way um, Baragar defined this is um, in order to extend the proof of the Zagier on the growth of the Markov numbers, and then what he um, did in this in his paper where he first defined this um, generalized Markov Horvitz equation is um, to prove the similar growth result and recovered quite um, natural um, generalization from um, Zagier's result, but at the same time um, studied like further, um, you know behavior of these fundamental sets and so on uh, in order to generate the integral solutions. And um, following Baragar's result, um, there's a result by Gambert, Maggie, and Ronan, um, who explicitly also defined all these constants and so on using um, pretty technical um, methods, which I'm um, not necessarily going to mention in this, um, in this talk for now. But there are quite a lot of um, results which have been proved in this um, for these objects, and then often they are really deep. So um, this is one topic um, which is very interesting to study. And then, um, yeah, I, I will finish my talk for now here. Um, but thank you very much for um, inviting me and being in my talk. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>